Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike, and with all the Scream 6 goodness going around, I thought, hey, what better time to revisit some of the almost youth adult novel 1996 Scream inspired movies, if you will, that are out there. There's plenty of them. There is this one, Cherry Falls, which I've never seen, and oh my god, is it a trip. There's Dead Man's Curve. There's some movies like that, so, uh, Soul Survivors, some just weird Scream inspired, the VR Troopers movies to the Power Rangers. Uh, obviously, there's I Know What You Did Last Summer, but more movies like that, the Urban Legends, things like that. There's a ton of them I have, actually haven't seen, which is weird for me, being Scream being maybe my favorite horror movie of all time. So I'm going to take a look at some of those and I had to start with Cherry Falls and oh my God, what a weird movie. This is like, this is like alternate universe horny scream, <laughs> whatever the hell's going on with this. So if you want to see this review and all the reviews like it and all the scream updates and stuff like that, please do me a favor, click the subscribe button and uh, the bell as well. And that way your computer or what have you, your phone, if you're not old like me, we'll tell you what's going on and when we put up those videos. So, with that being said, Cherry Falls is a movie that came out in the dark year of our Lord, 2000. Four years after Scream, this movie came out. And it is just, oh my god, it's Cruel Intentions mixed with Scream, mixed with Wes Craven's Cursed. Because you could tell just the production was also cursed on this one. There's just some wild, wild stuff in this movie. And let me just say, it is broken. It is broken from top to bottom. And let me just also say that I love it from top to bottom because what they get right in this movie is the dialogue the that weird 90s early 2000s high school feeling vibe it gives you some of the scream vibes that you got from scream just in a package that's not all that great that's that's just broken to shit and we'll get into all of exactly why but starting with the plot of the movie the plot on IMDb simply just says that in the small town of Cherry Falls a psychotic murderer is killing off the virgins of the local high school that's the twist on this one is that this killer who shows up looking like a roadie for Alice Cooper mixed with the character from Malignant, just running around with their, their long hair mixed with gray and black, covering their face entirely. So there's almost a Samara, the ring type thing going on, running around with various tools and like red fingernail polish, but also super manly fingers. Like you can see their fingers look like, you know, old man Crispin's fingers. Uh, they might as well be Clint Eastwood's fingers for all intents and purposes. But just running around killing people wearing high heels, it's strange because there's the killer's so violent you can tell it's it seems like it's it's a man just in the way its mannerisms are, and again, salad fingers. But the twist is they're killing only virgins. So literally every person who dies in this town's versions and what happens with that is once the town finds out that the killer's only killing versions, all of the teenagers in this scream like Woodsboro like high school in Cherry Falls decide to start fucking. They literally create a party at this like gigantic warehouse type space where they're bringing their own beds and they're all just going to bang it out in this hotel all the versions to keep themselves from by getting killed from from this killer and they literally have lines in the movie like it's the hymen holocaust you got to be there at one point someone said holy hymen batman <laughs> principal <laughs> when told that the killer is only killing high school versions <laughs> looks at the sheriff played by michael bean looks directly at michael bean and <laughs> and says to him <laughs> If word gets out about this, we're going to have a goddamn fuck fest on our hands. <laughs> so that's what you're in for. And it literally happens. There's a gigantic orgy. All the kids are just so horny and excited about it. It's the last day of school. Meanwhile, this killer's going about and you don't know who they are. You don't know what their motive is. It's slowly unveiled to you. Very much scream-ish style. And that is Cherry Falls. But in case you're not familiar with it, this isn't some run-of-the-mill, low-budget, generic slasher. This had the goods behind it. It cost $14 million to make, directed by Jeffrey Wright. Let me list to you the cast in this movie. It's going to blow your freaking 1990s mind. Brittany Murphy is the lead, and she was actually really good in the film. Like, honestly, like, no joke, she was good. I missed all the badness in it. Jay Moore is in the movie as a teacher. Michael Bean's in the movie as a sheriff. A lot to say about that later on. Jesse Bradford you know the dude from swim fan in this movie as well gabriel mann is in this movie as like the billy loomis type character with the crazy wild cool hair and i genuinely no shit thought it was michael rosenbaum the entire film until i looked it up afterwards i mean look at him 
And no shit, legitimately. Like if you're if you're a fan of the, like the '90s era of movies and stuff, watching this movie, even the people who you can't really pick out, you'll just see their face and go, "I know that fucking guy." There are so many parallels to Scream to the, in this movie. I've almost never seen a movie, even more so than I know what you did last summer. This movie is is definitely in the wake of Scream, maybe like no other movie I've ever seen. It has an opening kill just like Scream, and then the movie comes on. You've got the main the, the main Sydney type character and Brittany Murphy. You've got her too cool for school boyfriend. There was a very stew-like character in this character named Tibby, who I just thought was gonna be the stew of the movie. I think he's meant to be. He's wild, crazy, over the top, and like super, in this version of it, he's like super sexual and stuff like that, because it just fits in the movie. But that's totally meant to be the stew character. The pan down shots of the high school after the murder, and, and people coming up to Brittany Murphy, like, oh my God, you didn't hear? The class, Jay Mowers plays a plays a English professor talking to the students about it, the way the students react about it. They quip. The only thing is, they're there's no meta stuff. They don't really talk about other horror movies, but just the students' reaction, the cold, mean reaction that they have, the obsession they all have with banging each other. It's so fucking scream everyone's a suspect i've never seen anything like it and that's where the movie's enjoyable is in the teenage interactions even though they're strange and weird and quirky and just like it almost feels like you told a chat gpt to make a scream movie or aliens try to make their own version of a scream movie it's off and strange and weird like but at the same time it is so fucking spot on in so many ways so if you're a huge huge scream fan you will get a kick out of watching this movie and enjoy it is it good? Nah, really, not really in the overall bearing sense of the world. The problem is the horror is awful. The horror is just pure rotten garbage juice trash. So they got the comedy, they got the characters, they got that vibe right, but the horror is just way off. First off, every time there's a kill or an action scene, all of a sudden it turns into one of those like super techno type things. Like, you know, the, the things that would play on DVDs was like, you wouldn't steal a car. Dum, 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 criminals doing shit. And it's like, so why would you steal a movie? It feels like that. The camera gets super shaky and everything gets blurry. And it's just a close up of a girl's mouth going, ah, while they're getting stabbed or whatever's happening to them. It's hard to even make it out. There are a couple okay chase scenes in it. Like I said before, the killer is pretty violent with its victims. So with their victims. So it's, it's pretty, that's pretty entertaining, but like, yeah, it just turns into a fucking prodigy music video, like smack my bitch up on acid every time any sort of action scene happens, and it's just difficult to even follow what's going on. Those scenes are terrible. It's just such bad camera work. Talking about strange things, there is some weird ass mustard fuck shit going on in this movie. First off, with the parents. The parents of Brittany Murphy's character, and by the way, she's super awesome in this movie once again. She's super like, kind of like goth and like spazzy and cool. She looks like she could take over as Ling's secret for garbage any day of the week. Uh, I loved her character in this movie. She was great. And her mom, paid by Candy Clark, is just super fucking weird. I don't know what her deal is, but she acts like like Eminem's de mom in Eight Mile, like I made you pancakes. Like she's just weird, man. I don't know what's going on with her. The first time she pulls up in the car, she like bums a cigarette off Kenny, and he's like, they are looking at each other like they've totally been fucking. It's just so strange. She's like, you got a light? Cigarettes will kill me. They're so bad for me. I like bad boys. Like not that's very, very not verbatim, but it that awkward and the weirdest part about the whole movie is the parents by the way so like i mentioned michael bean's the sheriff and he's her dad and i i'll, I'll just I'll, I'll come right out and say this look i met michael bean once and he was a huge jerk to me for no good reason whatsoever and uh, so i have no qualms with saying this i'm not saying this because of that but he's awful in this movie like you would think michael bean i love a lot of his work terminator aliens tombstone he, he's a great actor, or has the capability to be a great actor. He did not want to fucking be there. He did not want to be there any more than he wanted to be talking to me that fucking day. Virgins. Neary have I seen an actor more checked out than Michael Bean was on this movie. This was a film that was meant to pay the old gas bill, but the parents with her. First off, parents kiss their kids on the lips all the time. No big deal. Not weird at all, in my opinion. It's sometimes weird when you see it on TV or something, but lots of parents kiss their kids on the lips, even when they're grown. That's not that strange. 
But the way they do it in this movie, first off, the mom kisses her on the lips. And then the next thing you know, the dad and her are doing like Taekwondo or some shit. And they do that weird, awkward Joss Whedon fall down thing where the dad falls on Michael Bean falls on top of Brittany Murphy and like lands on her chest. And they like stare at each other for a minute. I'm like, what the Bates Motel fuck are they about to make out? And I'm thinking, that's just me. I'm just being immature. And then there's another scene later on where she, the girl, Brittany Murphy comes home and the mom is sitting there like making pancakes and drinking brandy. It's a very nightmare on elm street situation with the drunk mom with with a lot of guilt on her mind and she comes in and like she kisses on the lips once and then a second time and then i mean i swear to god it's like she's chasing britney murphy around the kitchen trying to make out with her i don't know what's going on in this movie there's several scenes like that between the dad and her and her and her and when the dad at one point comes to a room and he asks her if is she's a virgin and she says yes and he looks disappointed because obviously the killer's killing you know virgins she's like are you disappointed in me and i'm like what the fuck it's so weird i don't know maybe i'm looking too deep into it did anybody else see this movie and get super strange parent vibes from them she was like eskimo kissing like with her tongue out it was just whoa as keanu reeves would say whoa but just a whole lot of strange stuff like that. Strange editing, almost very Halloween sixious with the editing. Some edits made no sense. We jump from one scene to another. Then, then there's over the top sequences, like when the sheriff tells the the PTA meeting of parents that, hey, the killer looks like he's killing virgins, and then everybody gets in a fist fight, and there's like a Royal Rumble Detroit Pistons versus the Indiana Pacers, pal Malice in the Palace type situation comes out where they all start fighting. <laughs> and like fist fighting in the middle of the gymnasium while Michael Bean's character just sits there and goes and does nothing about it because he's apparently as bad a, as a sheriff as he is an actor in this movie. <laughs> and then and then there's the sex stuff that actually happens in this movie. Like the first two scenes of the movie are just overly long make out loud kissing car scenes. Everyone's obsessed with banging in the movie. And there's a lot of cruel intentions, this clever dialogue that's going on, albeit sort of broken like most of this movie is. But you, you get the picture about sex. There's one girl who's banged everybody and she's teaching the other girls. Uh, she's standing on a picnic table telling the other girls how it's going to be. Just like, look, forget about an orgasm. It's not going to happen. It's going to last about 10 seconds. And like... All this crazy stuff going on with that. When everybody decides they're going to go to this party and fuck so that the killer can't kill them, which is a batshit premise to begin with. I kind of love it. I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. But if you look back at the 90s, we did weirdly sexualize high schoolers. But anyways, the sex stuff is just so strange. Like, So at the end of the day, when all the students decide they're going to be there, it kind of reminds me of when they had the, the giant party because of the curfew in Scream where everybody's like excited and partying and Youth of America's playing. Only they're going there specifically to fuck. And it's like this warehouse type place and they show it too. Like there's these kids at this weird rave and they're all like dancing and then they start making out. And then all of a sudden a chase with a killer leads to this house and they're in there. They be fucking like they're all in there. The whole house is just full of just teens, just fucking. And that's probably why the movie got an NC 17 was only released in the States. Or I don't know if it got an NC 17, but it was chopped up so bad that it ended up having to be released on the USA networks in the US. It never got a full theatrical US release despite them spending $14 million on it. They, they cut out a lot of the breasts and stuff like that. So it's not like super gratuitous, but it's just, even though you can't really see anything going on for the most part, it's just a whole house like a Walmart during a tornado shelter while everyone's just fucking on top of each other. It's it's wild. It's like the Joker released gas in, in there, only it made him fuck instead of smile. The students are cheering at one point, hail, hail, Huntington Eye, drop your pants, it's fuck or die. <laughs> I think we should definitely put that on a t-shirt. There's a weird sex scene involving Brittany Murphy and Gabriel Mann where she, she like takes her power back, I guess, or whatever, because he's been trying to get her to fuck this whole time. She puts her, they're rubbing each other's feet and she puts her toe in his mouth and she's like, bite it. And he's like, what? And she's like, bite it harder. And she's like, he's biting her toe. And then she's, she's hitting him in the face with her other foot. And he's like, what the fuck? I just weirdness. Why was that so hot? I don't know, Mike. Just absolute insanity. And it's fun. It's entertaining. It gets the people going. As far as the mystery stuff goes, there is a pretty neat sort of reveal. They don't actually go through the whole, well, no, they do kind of go through the whole motive thing. Yeah, it's screamish in that way too. But there's a very Nightmare on Elm Street type of storyline running through this as well. I won't spoil it in case you haven't seen it, but the killer reveal Oh my God, I would say you won't expect it, but given how this movie is, I kind of expected it just because everything else is so crazy. Not that bad of a, of a, of a guess who mystery reveal though, but the way they do it is just 
fucking wily, man. And then the final fight scene that just takes place, again, horrendously shot, but somehow awfully entertaining. I, I, I can't even begin to explain to you <laughs> the lead, the, the actor who takes this role and chews the fuck out of the scenery when they reveal themselves as the killer and how that story ties in. And I'm just going to say, what the fuck, sloppy fourths? That's disgusting, by the way. Um, for that one person's story, if you've watched the movie and you know what I'm talking about, sloppy thirds or fourths, uh, I knew what I was doing. Oh, and then the killer reveal is just, it's just so over the top and like strange land. You remember D Snyder's strange lands like that mixed with scream mixed with malignant somehow, uh, weird, terribly shot, but fucking endlessly entertaining. If you're a scream fan and you, this is a movie to have drinks with your friends Watch and have a blast. I'm going to give Cherry Falls a 7 out of 10 just for t getting so close to that Scream vibe, but also just being goddamn ballsy and hilarious. Again, 7 out of 10 for a movie that I will not say is good if you are not a hardcore Scream fan who's just looking to have a few drinks and a good time. But it's worthy enough of a 7 for me. I'm glad I shit to have watched it. I will definitely rewatch and show Cherry Falls to others. It's hard to find. You're going to have to do some work to find it. But it's out there. Uh, just like the truth. Oh, and I still don't know what the fuck was up with the deputy with the John Woo shit and the weird faces the whole movie. If anybody who's seen it, what the hell was her deal? Seriously, the John Woo fucking guns and like just every 20 minutes in the movie, she would just be like, look at the camera like, <sighs> just weird fuck shit. Like there was a whole storyline that was supposed to happen that didn't take place. How many times can I say weird fuck shit about this movie? That is just this movie. Weird fuck shit. There's my Rotten Tomatoes blurb. Thanks for hanging out with me. Don't forget to subscribe so we can walk through all these sunshine shitties VR Troopers versions of Scream movies together. I love your fucking faces as always, guys. You guys have a great day. Halloween never ends. Suck my fucking dick. And I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box. Or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS, cause Halloween never 